How do you do 3D animation on an indie budget? You can buy those packs if you've got enough money for those, they'll get you going, but there'll always be something missing. So what do you do? Well, I make my own, and hopefully in time, if the game does well, or if I find an animator who wants to work with me, they'll improve on what I make. I'm using Umotion Pro here, but there is a community edition which has everything that you need to get started. It just doesn't have some of the advanced pieces like IK. They're a convenience. You can get going for free with Umotion Community. Links are in the description. Here I'm going to make a shrug animation for a talking character. Let's get going. So here we have a clean scene and we're going to drop in a plane. And then on top of that plane, we'll drop our character. This is just a simple character that I often use for creating the first versions of my animations. It doesn't have hands and face bones and so on. We need to open up the Umotion Clip Editor. This is where we're going to actually edit the clip. And we also need the Umotion Pose Editor, which allows us to work with the character poses. So we'll just dock those in. And now we need a Umotion Project to work with, and that will group together all of the clips we want. So we go to File, New Project, Humanoid in this case. So we'll click on that, and we'll save that and give it a name. Okay, now we have that, we can drag our NeoCore character into the Pose Editor. First time you do this, it's going to set up the, the uh, rig for you, and as long as your character is well rigged, that will just work automatically for you. Now, to work with this character, we've got a couple of setup things that we need to do. The first is we're going to switch this over to Generate, so that it automatically generates keys for us. And then we'll go into the Config mode, and we'll set up the IK. So we'll use the IK setup wizard. Usually this works okay. What you're looking for is this arrow is pointing in the right direction. You can invert it if need be, but usually it'll be okay. So you click OK. Check that the hand and foot uh, targets have been found correctly, and then click Create. And that will set up the IK rig automatically. You can do all sorts of configuration, but 9 times out of 10, or even 99 times out of 100, you won't need to. So back in the Pose Editor, we can now start posing. These boxes on the end are the IK handles. So we'll just move that into Move by hitting W, and then we can start positioning the bones. And you see these blue bones? They represent the IK bones, and they'll show where this character will move if we put the handle in that place. Now this circle is the hint, and we can use that to make the arm twist a little bit. At the moment, the elbow is pointing out towards that hint. So you just move that around, you can see the arm twists slightly. Now, to make the forward kinematics to match the inverse kinematics, you click this button, but you do need to have the box selected. Then click set FK to IK, and it moves it. Now, in this case, we don't have bones in the hands, and so we're not worrying too much about the position of the hands. I do that all the time in the simple first case scenarios. Uh, later, I'll come back and, and work with bones and so on, but I'll just position the hand correctly as you can see there, and then copy to the other side. And I'm not going to have it exactly the same on the other side, but it's always a good idea to just start roughly here. We're going to adjust it a little bit just so it's slightly different. You don't want it fully symmetrical, that will look odd. And then click set FK to IK and it moves again. So just tweak a little bit until you're happy with that initial positioning of the arms and then we can move on. I always like to move the head just a little bit, regardless of what I'm doing, because the head is always moving, so I always just make a little adjustment. And now I'm going to move the legs a little bit. Uh, so we were shrugging, so the legs are going to move back a little bit on one and a little bit on forward on the other one. So I'm just going to use the IK again, just to move the foot around, move the leg backwards and uh, bend the knee a little. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Uh, one thing that you might notice here is when you've got the IK, IK selected, you do actually have to click off it in order to be able to get back to other bones and so on. So just a few more final tweaks to the hands here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the topmost key in the clip editor and copy that with Control C and then move the green bar along and paste them in. So now I have the same pose at the beginning and the end of this clip that's about one and a half seconds long, or maybe a second long. And if I play, of course, nothing happens um, because it's the same clip at the beginning of the end. So now what we want to do is we want to put in some keyframes in between these two points. So let's move along to about a third of the way through 
and let's start making the shrug motion. So we're going to have him bend forward, we're going to bring the shoulders in, we're going to move the arms around a little bit, maybe shuffle the legs around a bit. So the trick here is to just play around and try and figure out the right movements that you're going to do. My recommendation is don't obsess over getting it perfect. If you do, you're just going to be tweaking forever more. Get something that's approximately right. Get it in your game. Start working around with it, looking at what's happening. Find the things that really annoy you about your animations. Come back and tweak them later on. So here you're just wanting to do something nice and quick and get it going. So I've sped up the video at this point so you can see what I'm doing, but uh, you might want to slow it down if you want to see exactly what's going on. But essentially it's a repeat of what we've already done. So at this point I have a keyframe in the middle, so I'm going to copy that and move it a little bit later on and now go back in and tweak it a little. So I'm going to bring the hands in a little, maybe have the head move around a bit, um, just add some variation in. And you can see from the video here that I'm adding various keyframes in and I'm changing the settings that um, we have on different bones at different points playing through by dragging the green bar along, sometimes playing it, and eventually I'll get to something that looks reasonably good. Now there is a trick that you can see if you watch what's going on carefully, you can see I've changed the parameter in the animation tab on the inspector on the right there, um, from generate to update. The update will tell us which bones have been changed but we've not saved and that can help you avoid making errors later on. The generate that we had it in originally uh, will always generate a new key at that point for every bone that has moved. So update will allow you to select the ones that get saved. Generate will always create them. So I've slowed the video down now to real time. Uh, but it still looks way too fast even in real time. So let's make it longer. You just grab hold of this top item which grabs all of the keys in that column and we can drag it along. We can zoom out using this slider here to give us more space and just make the whole thing longer and then spread out the keyframes that we have created. And once we've done that we can hit play and we'll see that it is better but it's still not quite right. I mean, we, we, we don't want it perfect. Remember what I said earlier on about just get something working, get it in your game, see how it works. I often actually just put the poses in when I'm doing this uh, just to get started. Um, but I don't want to do the complete thing here. So I've slowed the playback down and that allows me to look at exactly what's happening and what's wrong with it. And here I'm deciding I think it's not enough movement in the leg. The body is moving quite a lot, but the leg is really pretty steady. So I'll speed it up again as I start adding some more keyframes and change things around in the leg and a few other tweaks that we've got going. And while that's playing, it's worth thinking about a few things you can do to help you get the animation. First of all, you need reference materials. You need to be looking at people doing the motion that you want um, and just copying what they do. Don't try and do it from mind because it just doesn't work. It always ends up looking pretty awful, especially for me. I'm no animator. I'm just throwing these things together so I can get them in my game. Um, when I've found the animation that I want and it fits into my game appropriately, then I'm going to get a real animator to do the work for me. Um, you can, of course, buy animation packs, and they are great at doing the prototyping stuff, but I find that it's often hard to get some of the more esoteric animations that you need, and so having basic tooling like this to throw them together is really useful. The first step we did where we had a pose right at the beginning and the same pose at the end, that's really enough to be able to get going. Your animation controller in Unity will actually interpolate between those. It will look janky, it'll look pretty awful, but it will give you an indication in-game of what it looks like. Every time you feel like coming back and tweaking and improving, you can come back in and use U-Motion. Uh, to make those changes. You can actually make them at runtime as well, so you can really tweak them in the right environment. So the purpose of this video is just to teach you the basics of Umotion Pro, show you how easy it is, but animation is an art form in its own right. So don't overtax yourself, just get something working. That's my recommendation.
And here is that something working after about 20 minutes work in real time. It's not the best animation in the world, but it definitely communicates what I want to communicate in the game. And for 20 minutes work, it's not bad. It lets me move forward and get on with my game design and my coding. I'll get a real artist in if this animation needs to be used in the final game. So now we want to save this. So we click on the file icon over here and we click on export and we go to current clip. And the first time you do this, it's going to say, hey, you haven't got a save place uh, set up. So you click on open settings. You can click on the uh, gear icon to get there as well. And this field here needs filling in with the red box. So I'm going to go into my animations folder here. And this is going to be one of my talk animations. So I'm going to go through into the talk folder and select that folder. And now I can go to the clip, give it a name. I'm going to call this talk-shrug. I call all my talk animations talk-something. Close that. So that's configured everything nicely. And now I can go to file export, current clip. And this time it exports it. So if I go and navigate to that location in my project folder, I will find my new animation clip inside the talk directory. Here it is, talk shrug. And I can play it like you would any other animation. It is targeted onto our little Unity guy here. And you can see it needs retargeting. But um, that's fine because I only designed it for this particular character to, to start with. And that's where I'm going to be using it in my uh, initial prototype of the game. Later on, if I need to, I can retarget. But that's a subject for another video. Thanks a lot. See you soon.